Hi there, my fellow Java programmer. In this episode, you're going to learn how to schedule tasks with help of the Quartz library, and that means running a program or part of a program, daily, monthly, weekly, whatever you specify. Let's get started. So as you can see, I've got a very simple Maven project here, and it's only got one class, the app class, has an almost empty POM XML file with the JUnit dependency, and the first thing you need to do is, well, add the Quartz library as dependency to your project. And when you open up a browser and search for Quartz, maybe even documentation, you'll find the link quartzscheduler.org, and that's the correct library. You hit download, and they were nice enough to just put the Maven dependency coordinates on the website, so you simply copy them, paste them into your POM XML file, and then after a while you should see them under external libraries. Good, and let's go to the app class, rename it to something like Quartz Test, because it's really not just an app, it's a Quartz Test, good. And then you can delete the Hello World line. Okay, now the main concept or the main class in Quartz is a scheduler and you need a scheduler to do anything with Quartz. What's a scheduler? A scheduler is basically a class that keeps track of all of your jobs. So say you have a bank transfer job or cleaning up some files job. So everything that does something is a job. And then the scheduler also keeps track of triggers. And the trigger is something that says, run me daily, run me every second, run me bi-weekly or whatever. And the scheduler combines these two and makes sure that the job gets executed through a trigger. Okay, so you need a scheduler, then import the right class. And then there's a standard scheduler, or Quartz comes with a standard scheduler, the default scheduler, which runs a memory and nothing too exciting for now. And the only thing you need to do is call scheduler start. And then also later on, you should call scheduler shutdown whenever you think your scheduler finished running all his jobs. Okay, now let's try that. Run the main method. It takes a second. And then we'll get a uh, static logger binder exception because we have no logging library in the class path. Let's quickly change that. When you go to mavenrepository.com, then look for the SLF4J simple log binding, right? You copy that, copy the dependency, go back to idea, the POM file, paste it inside, remove the scope. Good, now rerun the test. And we should see some log messages. And that's right, we get a couple of messages printed out. And as you can see, well, there's a squad scheduler was created. It runs in memory, the whole job store. So all your jobs live only in memory, not in the database or whatever. It's running locally with 10 threads, right? And then you start the scheduler and then you shut it down again. And these are two lines up here. So let's remove the shutdown line because we don't wanna stop our scheduler. And instead let's do something exciting in here and that is actually starting a job. So first of all, you need a new job and the class is called job detail in quartz. And there's a static method on a builder class. Let's see if idea finds the import, it does. So you import a static method, job builder, new job. Then you put in your job class and let's say you have a bank transfer job where you need to transfer money to someone uh, bi-weekly for your rent, for example. So let's put it in here. Then with identity, which basically says, what is the name of the job? So let's call it bank transfer. And then you can simply call build. And that's all you need to do. Now you have a job. And the class does not yet exist, so you just create it, make it an inner class for now, make it implement the job interface, also make it public. Good. So now you have the bank transfer job. And as I just said, you now also need a trigger. 
And it's similar to the job. You can call new trigger. And there's a static method import, right? Then you say with identity. So let's call the trigger trigger one for now. And you can configure the trigger. Start now. So immediately. And then you can give it a schedule with schedule. And again, there could be a ton of different schedules, like a cron schedule. But for now, let's say you want a simple schedule. You can import it. It's a static method. And then you can go with interval in hours, milliseconds, seconds, let's say five seconds for testing, and then repeat forever. So that trigger has a schedule of now, then every five seconds forever. And then you call build. Good. And now the last thing is combining, as I said before, combining these two. So you tell your scheduler, well, scheduler, schedule job, the job up here with my trigger. And it would be nice to have that trigger in a variable. So you just call it trigger. Go down here, pass it in here. That combines these two. And that now basically says, well, that job, my bank transfer job should run every five seconds. The job should do something like I am transferring money to my girlfriend or whatever, right? Print it out, could do anything. And now let's give that whole thing a test run. You run the main method. And as you can see, the job ran immediately. I'm transferring money to my girlfriend. And now every five seconds, it's running again. I'm transferring money to my girlfriend. I'm transferring money to my girlfriend. And that means everything is working as expected. Congratulations, you now know the basics about the Quartz scheduler. And in the next episode, we're going to have a closer look at triggers and jobs again, and if you can use a database to store your triggers and whatnot. So let's get right after it.